Okay, good morning all. A uh, little pre-ride or pre-commute uh, update here uh, on some of the Riker accessories I installed over the weekend. Uh, unfortunately, I did have a uh, video of installing them, but my GoPro was so kind as to uh, corrupt or delete all my footage. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think it's a bad uh, SD card. Anyway, uh, I put on the uh, factory uh, sport adjustable windshield, uh, the ram mount, and the pannier mount. Uh, now, I already own the, the SH36s, uh, the bags, so I didn't need to purchase that uh, from Can-Am. Uh, just swap it over from bike to bike, and I'll show you how easy that is in just a second. Uh, the mounting on the windshield, uh, there was a notice in the forums about uh, spacer washers that were missing, and uh, apparently the tolerances on the little, I'm not sure if you can see it from where you are, but... Uh, this plastic bracket uh, that is uh, just more of a wind deflector than anything else, uh, the tolerances are a little too wide. So when you go to crank the uh, bolts down in there uh, into the front frame, it cracks those tabs. So the answer to it was just shim it up with more washers uh, behind it or between the, the lip of it and the, uh, uh, the mounting bracket so i did that uh, the other thing that i noticed in uh, can-am's manual uh, all of their stuff is online uh, they didn't include any washers for the uh, the facing side of the screws here it's kind of hard to see uh, i'm gonna take it apart again and uh, put some stainless steel washers behind the uh, the bolt head against the plastic just to spread the load out a little bit um, the other thing that they didn't mention is thread lock <laughs> uh, this is a high vibration item. You know, the Can-Am uh, or the, the Riker doesn't have uh, power steering, so every bump is doing this to the uh, uh, steering, and that's uh, bound to loosen those screws up. So I would recommend just putting a little dab of uh, blue thread lock on there uh, before you tighten them up, just to keep them from backing out. Uh, the only other caveat with this windshield is make sure you adjust this uh, tension lever before you mount the windshield. Uh, mine, as it came out of the box, was very loose. Uh, this was just floppy. Even in the uh, locked position, it was very floppy. So when I mounted it, obviously, it, it was just rattling, making noise. So in order to tighten that up, you have to loosen all of your uh, screws again. You have to loosen the bottom ones and take the top ones completely out. And then this thing will fold forward or hinge forward a little bit. And you can slide the windshield up and reach I don't know if you can see it, but they're the uh, screw on the back of that guy. You just tighten it up about maybe quarter turn, half turn, something like that, and test the tension on the lever. Make sure that it locks and stays tight and doesn't rattle around. So anyway, just little things to know before you waste 10 minutes of your time. Uh, the other thing I put on was the uh, X mount here, uh, which is a, a ram mount piece. This much of it is ram mount. This is... Can-Am BRP, and that is a fancy little bracket. I like it. Um, it has a cutout. I'm not sure if you can see that. It has a cutout or a uh, you know a bulge right here for the cable. And uh, if you were to use just a standard clamp mount, you would have to go behind this cable, obviously, so you don't pinch it. So that would mean you would either need to place it here or over here and just go behind the wire. But anyway, this is Can-Am's piece. Uh, again, their documentation is a little odd they say that you can only mount it over here and the gps mount is not compatible with this mount because they want everything over here next to the throttle side okay so if you don't have a cruise control like my hillbilly hack here uh, you can never reach up here if you got your gps and punch in something while you're riding because you'd be letting off of that and decelerating my point is I'm going to get two of these guys, <laughs> uh, one over here for the phone or whatever, another one over here for uh, either the GPS or my uh, GoPro, uh, and because this is just a standard uh, one-inch uh, ram mount under here. So you just take the little arm off of it, and then you can use any other ball mount you want for your GoPro or your uh, accessories, or if you've got a spot communicator or something like that, amateur radio, whatever suits your fancy uh, okay enough on that let's uh, move around to uh, the real uh, prize of the day which is this guy it went on very easily uh, again their documentation is a little sparse 
uh, but it's not anything difficult to understand. Uh, if you've already got the max mount, then you don't need the uh, adapter plate that's included with the pannier kit. Uh, because all that is is just kind of a, a thick buffer padding uh, to make it look like this uh, on this side because of what the max mount does. So, hey Grace. Um, anyway, uh, you just pull these two bolts out on the side of the max mount right here and here, and they include some longer ones uh, in the kit that are going to go in here, obviously, because of the extra thickness. Then you put uh, some little clips, uh, screw clips on the frame rail here and here, uh, mount this guy up loose, just run the screws in, leave it very loose and floppy. Uh, and then you've got another clip, if I can monkey the camera around here, there's another one of these little clips here, and uh, you slip it on this, uh, the edge of this frame rail, and then just put everything together, keep it loose. Uh, what I did is uh, get everything to where it's snug but not tight, and then lift up on it get everything lined up and uh, crank them down and uh, their bolts do include a little dab of thread lock uh, dry paste already on the threads so that's great good design there this uh, this went together really nicely so here's the uh, max mount or sorry the uh, pannier mount with shad's 3p system in action uh, please forgive the dirty bike these things have been out in the rain a couple times and i've not washed them yet uh, shad's 3p system it's really slick. Uh, you've got this handle here that opens up uh, to open the outer side of the case. This one is your locking lever. Uh, and notice you don't have to have a key to open this thing, which is great. Getting in and out of it is really easy. Uh, if you want to lock it, you make sure the handle's all the way down and then uh, it comes with a, a three key and an extra tumbler in case you key a top box at the same time, which I do have. Uh, so anyway, when you want to open it up, or take it off rather, you just lift this lever and lift up and hinge out. So how it works, I'm not doing a very good job here because I'm wearing a chest mount. Uh, that is the thing that grabs around the bar here to keep it on. So you've just got the, the end of the shoe, if you want to call it that, that goes into the front part of the rail right there. And then the upper one just lays here and here and locks in from the, the bottom. Super slick. So on and off is just literally a couple second thing. That's it. Done. On off. And they're real stable. Uh, they don't wobble around at speed. Uh, the frame uh, for this bike, uh, every, every one of these three-piece systems is specific for the bike. Uh, yeah, I lost an end plug. Look at that. Uh, I got this from Europe, actually, because the FC6 uh, Top Master is not sold here in the U.S., so I had that one shipped in just so I could put a uh, top box on this guy. Anyway, without further ado, here's the right pannier. Whoop, wrong one. Lift that guy off. Now, it looks like this on here, slightly different on the Riker. You're thinking, where does it go on? That right there is the lower front shoe. And then this just drops right on there. Click, done, game over. Now, I was a little concerned uh, when I was looking at the diagrams, thinking that this bag might be in line with debris from the tire uh, getting kicked up on the road. I th it might be a little bit. Uh, this is going to do a pretty good job of deflecting most of it, but um, I'm going to go ahead and cover the front of my uh, pannier in uh, the clear bra, the 3M uh, thick uh, bra stuff that you use on the front end of sports cars. So I'll probably cover it from, I don't know, maybe the whole front surface but probably just from about halfway down and then get this lower side as well. Uh, I don't know if this is showing up on camera, but the ABS is pretty soft on here. So any anything you hit it, you hit it with a boot, you scratch it with whatever, and it shows. So I just know that it's going to get pommeled. But looking from the back, you can tell that uh, it's inboard of the tire pretty good. Uh, I still think debris is going to get kicked up and probably end up... Uh, peppering the side of the, the case over time. So anybody that does this, you might want to invest in some clear bra uh, protector and at least get this uh, leading edge or front front surface of the box to keep it from getting nasty. So I'm going to do that later today. Uh, everything else is uh, coming along fine. Uh, I'll be doing my uh, helmet hook mod later today. 
there, there's a slight modification that has to be done to the hook uh, in order to fit behind this uh, raised lip here. Uh, so I'm going to take a one inch uh, uh, stepper bit and just kind of bore out the uh, the helmet hook and uh, it'll sit right in behind that and game on. So now I'm going to go dig in my garage for some uh, helmet uh, accessories. I have a, a new helmet mount for the GoPro uh, that arrived in the from Amazon yesterday and uh, I'm gonna go steal a uh, Cardo mic uh, from an old Cardo set that I had uh, that's in the garage and I'm gonna mount that underneath the chin here um, up in there so hopefully it'll be uh, much better audio. Uh, these are great microphones for communicating but uh, I think a lot of the magic happens inside of the electronics. I don't know how good the mic itself is, but we'll try it out. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do, I know this is getting to be a bit of a ramble, but uh, on the uh, the Link top case, uh, it's, it's kind of a non-starter for me in commuting duty. Uh, it's just really small. It's cute. It's neat. Uh, I do like the mounting mechanism, with the exception of there's no lock. Uh, you can't, can't lock this guy. It's... Uh, doesn't have provision for uh, when it's in its locked position. There's no key, there's no locking pin, anything like that. So uh, anybody could do what I just did, which is click it and walk off with it. And this is a $200 little box. So not, a, not an ideal situation. It needs a lock. Uh, I'll get into those little uh, discrepancies and niggles later. Uh, same thing kind of goes for the fuel lid and the frunk up here, but I'll get into that later. The reason this is a non-starter for me is this is a 12-inch Ultrabook. It's not a big laptop. A lot of people are carrying 14s, 15s, you know, MacBooks, etc. This is a 12-inch. You can tell it's not, not that big. Uh, even without the case or the uh, bag, it doesn't go in here. This is you can't get it in there any old way you try. It's just too wide on the corners. You can't uh, can't maneuver or munge it any old way. So the top lid is just, you know, because of this uh, decreased radius here, it's just a little too tight. So this is a neat idea, but I think its uh, application or its practicality is a little bit limited uh, for most people, uh, considering that uh, this is being marketed toward a younger crowd and, you know, potentially... Uh, Commuters, uh, college students, uh, anybody that's got an errand to run, you're going to have to find some small stuff to put in there. So anyway, that is now going to live in the side case, the pannier, along with my helmet and anything else uh, when I'm parked at client sites. So the inside of these, I didn't show that. I'll probably have to edit this, uh, stitch this footage together a little bit. But the inside of these is really well thought. Uh, you've got your retention strap here. Uh, the inner bags are an accessory. Uh, if you buy the, the set from Shad, normally they'll include the, uh, the inner bags as a, a free add-on, or you can pay $50 or $60 for the pair of them, but uh, the retention strap is nice, and the uh, retention strap on the uh, lid is particularly nice, so you don't have to worry about it flopping all the way open. Uh, in the Riker's case, it's pretty low to the ground, uh, so not having that would mean your lid would be scuffing on the ground real easy. Uh, on a bike, it's higher, so it's less of an issue, but still. Anyway, so the bag itself is nice. Uh, it's padded. Uh, it, I would think that it's probably water resistant, uh, definitely not waterproof. Um, but the, the box does have a uh, labyrinth seal uh, here, and I've never really had any problem with water getting in there, even in torrential downpours. So these are good cases. I really enjoyed it on my other bikes. Uh, so this guy will hold whatever you want. Uh, clothes, stuff. Uh, it has a couple of little hidden inner pockets on uh, each side to keep gear separated. That's nice. Uh, for me, I'm just going to go bag in a bag and see how well this plays for me. I know I can get the laptop in there without the uh, inner bag, but hey, just make my life easier. Any of you that uh, 
do get the inner bag. I recommend uh, putting your zippers up center top like this. If you have them down on either side, when you go to close the lid, uh, the uh, zippers will be getting stuck uh, in the sides of it. Ask me how I know. Right, stand that guy up in there a little bit. And clippy clippy and done. Now I did notice one other user, uh, one other YouTube reviewer, uh, Paul's Adventure. Uh, he has a little bit of trouble with his case uh, getting closed. I'm not sure what that's about. I've never had that issue with mine. Uh, they've always been real easy to open and close, so that might be a, an anomaly with his. Uh, I might take that up with uh, Shad or with uh, BRP, wherever you purchased it. Maybe they can swap it out for you. Um, the other interesting thing is uh, this one came with the carbon fiber uh, texture on it uh, for the the three-piece set and I think that looks pretty good on this bike I don't particularly like the the shiny piano black covers and things like that it's just something to get scratched and show dirt anyway so mount shad uh, side case uh, bonus they work great and it'll make this thing uh, much more practical for my commutes. My next hit list on this guy, uh, and besides the alignment, uh, I'm going to hope that somebody takes this on themselves. If they don't, I will. Uh, I'm going to make an adapter plate uh, for this Max mount. And what it's going to do, I might even uh, bastardize this case to get the, get the mount off of this. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this make up an aluminum uh, mounting plate for the back of the max mount here uh, to where I can mount whatever other top case on there I want. Uh, another shad case or something like that. Uh, I'll do it probably alt rider style uh, where it's a uh, slightly oversized aluminum plate. It's going to have uh, tie down uh, slots and uh, uh, slot, uh, perforations and things like that on it so you can uh, use rock straps and that sort of thing on it. Probably shouldn't be giving all my ideas here because somebody's going to steal it. <laughs> That's fine. Just make it so I don't have to. Anyway, I'll catch you guys on the road. Thanks.